Ozzy IAWD speaking to you from Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. And I am speaking to you on behalf of Brit Am Hebrew Nations. Our organization has found, has, rather has proven that the Lost and Tribes are now to be uh, located, and now located amongst Western nations. That is where the Lost and Tribes are. We do not say that everyone in these areas is descended from Israel. We are saying that is where the sense of the Ten Tribes are as coherent, cohesive entities. That is where historically they gave expression to the Israelite destiny. And this is important, and this should be known. And this, this is what uh, this is. A, this is a, the uh, the truth. This is uh, historically uh, uh, incontrovertible uh, on the whole regarding these bo the bodies of these peoples and the ancestors on the whole, uh, as it pertains to individuals. That is a problem that uh, in the future will be solved, God willing. But at the moment. We cannot say for certain that any individual is, belongs to Israel, but we can call upon Israelites or the individuals who belong to these peoples to recognize the, the uh, Hebraic ancestry of their nations and the, the Hebra he Hebraic goals, the biblically given uh, duties of these peoples as Israelites. And we can call, call upon them to work towards uh, clarifying the issue Becoming closer to God, to doing what they have to do according to the Bible, and to realizing their Israelite heritage. And this is important. And uh, this is our message. This is what we say. We say this all the time, day and night, and we work at it. We do. We research and we uh, we propagate and uh, publish, publicize the results of our research, and we work towards reconciliation between the lost in tribes and, and the Jewish people. And we have some results, and we should we should have more, but we do what we can. So, but this is important, and we believe that, that this message should be made known. So, um, a major uh, proofs of ours, a body of uh, proofs that we have, the evidence is derived from the Bible, it's derived from Scripture. We quote Scripture, we bring sources from Scripture, and uh, this, is what, as well, this is what we present to those to whom we address ourselves. We also have secular evidence. We bring uh, proofs from secular sources. It happens that uh, people whom we speak to, uh, especially those who are not so interested in something new and something challenging and something that is not uh, is, that is is not uh, in in line in line with with the convention. Uh, people are hesitant about uh, taking an interest or becoming involved. They already uh, have had too many experiences with uh, such approaches. Sometimes they have turned out badly and uh, they also don't want to uh, step out of line. They prefer to uh, stay with the mainstream. And this is the natural tendency of everyone. We all have this tendency. It is understandable. But nevertheless, the proof is there. The proof exists. But, but, and when we show people the proofs, it is, uh, it is proven. But uh, when, until you get to that stage, it's a problem. And they uh, take the attitude that perhaps the Lost Ten Tribes are recorded in the Bible, perhaps they are not recorded in the Bible, and if they are recorded in the Bible, what uh, importance do they have? What importance does the Bible attribute to them? And uh, what importance do they have in reality? And so we say that a good portion of the Bible, biblical prophecy, is concerns the Lost Ten Tribes, and that our present day, uh, uh, the events of the present day, our present day lives, are also connected with the message to the Ten Tribes, and we say that it should be of overwhelming, overriding importance. Uh, but uh, this is how it is. This is what we say. This is what they say. But uh, so uh, we, in answer, not an answer, but uh, as a counter to this, we should point out that in addition to the uh, prophecies that, they, uh, that we can, uh, can best be explained according to the Lost Ten Tribes, uh, being whom they are, we also have uh, explicit uh, and explicit messages in certain sections of the Bible. And one of these explicit sections is the book of Hosea, especially the first two chapters of the book of Hosea. It's not difficult to, uh, to remember the book of Hosea, the first two chapters, chapters 1 and 2 of Hosea. And Hosea speaks of the lost ten tribes. He speaks of the ten tribes of Israel. Remember, according to the Bible, as seen in the book of Kings and the books, uh, book of Chronicles and also in the prophets, 
There were 12 tribes of Israel, these 12 tribes of Israel split into two different sections, and the kingdom of, Jude, of uh, Judah in the south, uh, and the kingdom of Israel in the north. The kingdom of, of Israel in the north comprised 10 tribes. These 10 tribes were taken into exile, and all of them were taken away, and they were all exiled, and they disappeared, lost consciousness of their ancestry. The Bible indicated that they would do so, but also that they uh, will eventually return and re-acknowledge who they are and repent and be once again accepted as as Israelites, and they will this will they will be this will be made, made known to them as we are in, in our own way trying to make it known to them, and uh, things will be rectified, things will be made better. Hosea speaks of this. Hosea explicitly excludes Judah from his equation. He speaks about the lost ten tribes of Israel, he speaks about the Israelites, and he says not Judah. He's not, he says explicitly in Hosea 1.7 that he's not speaking of Judah, that Judah has another task, another fate awaits Judah. See Hosea 1.7. And he, he says, he is speaking of the northern Israelites, and he is told by God Almighty, Hosea was told by God Almighty to take a loose woman, a harlot, one would say, a harlot, take a loose woman, this woman is named Goma, and he used to have children from her. And these three children are of uncertain parentage, it appears, and at first he, he refuses uh, to acknowledge them as his children, or they are declared not to be his children. They are given names of the, cho the, 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 the uh, children, represent Israelites, and they represent the, the Israelites apart from Judah. In other words, they represent the ten tribes. And from this state of being disowned, they emerge as a, a very numerous, enormously wealthy and powerful. And out of that, they are once again acknowledged as legitimate offspring. That is the scenario. That is how it goes. Children are born, they are given names, representing Israelites, representing Israelites being disowned, but nevertheless becoming wealthy and numerous, then once again being acknowledged as who they are. And uh, that is uh, most of the first chapter, and the second chapter continues with the uh, details of variations, as we shall explain, but that is uh, how the first chapter goes. And uh, the name Goma. The name Goma was a real name, was the name of a real people who appeared in the Assyrian Empire. They first appeared in, this, as in the Assyrian Empire, the Goma, the Skimmerians. Uh, they appeared in the regions to which the Israelites had been exiled. They uh, appealed, appeared, first uh, appeared in the same regions to which the Israelites had been exiled. And there's a lot of uh, different uh, uh, points of evidence and proofs showing that Israelites were amongst them, that they are to be equated, equated with the Israelites. And so we have the, the secular evidence uh, corresponding with uh, the scenario that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Hosea presented. So let's read a little bit and then uh, return to our commentary and explaining it and we'll, uh, this is a short talk, but an important one. Hosea chapter 1 verse 1 says, The Lord, the word of the Lord that came to Hosea the son of Beri in the days of Uzziah, Yotam, Ahaz, and Ahaziah, kings of Judah, in the days of Jeroboam, the sons of, son of Joash, king of Israel. Just to remind you that Hosea himself was a member of the Lost Ten Tribes. He, he was the son of Beri, who was a prince in the, in the tribe of Reuben. In other words, he was an important person. And he was uh, predicting what would happen to his people, to the ten tribes of Israel. And he goes on in verse 2, When the Lord spake, began to speak by Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take yourself a, ch a wife of harlotry, a loose woman, and children of harlotry. A woman, uh, children who were offspring of a woman who, who sleeps around, one could say. One would say, there was uh, not certain who the father was. And it says, For the land has committed great harlotry by departing from the Lord. So he went into Goma, the daughter of Deblaim. Goma is the name of this woman. And Goma was the name that, that, that uh, people had who appeared in the areas to which the Israelites were exiled shortly afterwards. And we identify these people with the, these same Israelites. Or with another entity with whom the Israelites be become confederated and linked up with. At all events, they are they become equated with Israelites. As, and this is what, uh, in his own way, Hosea is saying. 
So anyway, when he took this woman to Goma, the daughter of Dibaim, and she conceived and bore him a son, the Lord said to him, call his name Jezreel, or Yisrael, Yisrael, with a Z and not an S, uh, for a little while I will avenge the bloodshed of Yisrael on the house of Judah and bring him and bring an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. I'll avenge the bloodshed of Yisrael on the house of Yehu and bring an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bore a daughter. And God said to him, call her name Loruhama. Loruhama mean, uh, meaning she who is unpitied, she to whom no mercy has been shown. For I will no longer have mercy in the house of Israel. And I will utterly take them away or take them all away. They will all be exiled as indeed all the ten tribes were exiled. This is what Hosea is saying. Yet, in verse 7, 1, 7, Hosea 1, 7, he says, Yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah, and save them by the Lord their God, not save them by bow, nor by sword, or battle, by horses or horsemen. So he's saying that Judah is out of the equation. Judah is not being uh, symbolized in these names. The other tribes are. So this is an important point. He's not talking about Judah in this prophecy. He's talking about the ten tribes of Israel. And uh, Hosea took, uh, as we said, Hosea took uh, Gomli begat Jezreel. Now Jezreel means scattered by God. He represents, we saw how the name represents a future calamity that should overcome the, the kingdom of Israel. Then he begat another child, Loruhama. She who has not been shown mercy, unpitied. And we are told that no mercy, no mercy will be shown in the house of Israel, that they will all be taken away. As it said in Isaiah 1 6, they will be utterly taken away, as indeed they were, the lost ten tribes. The ten tribes of Israel were utterly removed, exiled by the Assyrians. But Judah will be saved, as, as we saw in verse 1 7. And it's important to remember that uh, the, the Hosea himself was a member of the lost tribes of the ten tribes of Israel and was prophesying before they were exiled, he was prophesying in the land of Israel and he was foreseeing what would happen to his own people of whom he was a, a member. And he continues, Hosea 1 verse uh, 8, Now when she had weaned Lo Ruchama, she conceived a boy a son, then God said, call his na name Lo Ami. Lo Ami in Hebrew means not my people. For you are not my people, and I know will not be your God. Yet the children, are, the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered, shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, there shall be said to them, You are the sons of the living God. That's what it says. And what has happened here? What exactly have we read? Hosea begat from Goma another child called Lo Ami, meaning not my people. And... Uh, they will not be considered the people of the Almighty, but, but they will increase to a very great multitude, and then after that, they will be called my enemy, the sons of the living God. They will be called my people. Um, they will be called the sons of the living God. Once again, they will be re-acknowledged. They will return to God, as if to say. So we have a process of them being disowned, but nevertheless increasing to very great numbers. And after that being uh, recognized once more as God Almighty. And he continues in uh, Hosea 1.11, he says, And the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together and appoint for themselves one head, and they shall come back out of the land, for great will be the day of Israel, Jezreel. And uh, Judah and the ten tribes will reunite as we, uh, we, see, we see here. Uh, Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together. They shall come together and appoint themselves one head. And this will be a reunification of Judah with the ten tribes. And then this name uh, Jezreel has a double meaning. It can mean both the, the, the L section at the end. Jezreel, Israel. At the end, L means gods. Israel means uh, scattered, uh, cast, spread out. It can also mean brought in, in some time, in some brought in from uh, the root Zroya. Very often in Hebrew, the same word root is, is used for one action and the opposite action. So the, the same name with a, with a, with a changing, with a changing of, of, its, of how it's pronounced, or the same groupings of letters have a, can have a one and, and the contra, exact contradistinctly opposite meaning. It's uh, worth noting. And uh, we saw 
that uh, they would be uh, taken away altogether, disowned, and then become uh, numerous and re acknowledge. And then Hosea too continues with this message, but he seems to uh, to uh, start giving details. We could look at it this way. Hosea 1, as if to say, was giving us a very brief overall picture. Hosea 2 returns on what he has been saying, but a lengthening out, giving more and more detail. And the rest of Hosea follows this pattern uh, to, to some degree. Always, well, this pattern is found in the rest of Hosea. So Hosea 2 verse 1 says, Say to your brethren, my people, and your sisters, mercy is shown. Where they were told they were not my people, not Ami, they would be called Ami, my people. And where they were, where they were called Low Rohama, unpitied, they would be called Rohama, mercy is shown. Uh, so those, the rest of the children of Israel who were disowned, they shall be acknowledged. And Hosea continues, he complains about the conduct of Goma, who represents the Israelites in their places of exile. And he says, Hosea, to bring charges against your mother, bring charges. For she is not my wife, nor am I her husband. Let her put away her harlotries from her sight, and her adulteries from between her breasts. Let her just strip her naked and expose her as in the day when she was born, and make her like a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. In other words, the Israelites in exile represent by Goma are threatened with punishment unless they repent. As it says, verse 4, 2, Hosea 2, verse 4. For I will not have mercy on her children, for they are the children of harlotry. For their mother has played the harlot. She who conceived them has behaved shamefully. She said, I will go after my lovers who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up away with thorns and wall her in, so that she cannot find a path. She will chase her lovers, but not overtake them. Yea, she will seek them and not find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband. But then it was better for me then than now. For she did not know that I gave her grain, new wine, and oil, and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. Baal was a pagan god that the Israelites and the Canaanites and the peoples around them worshipped at that time, and also the, the, the Israelites in their places of exile, especially the, the section known as the, the Celtic peoples, in the British Isles, and, and in, in Western Europe, they also, also worshipped a god called Baal, which is another form of the name Baal. And this is not something that we are, that cannot be checked. Look it up in the in the Wikipedia. Look it up uh, on on the web. You will see that their main god was known as ba as Bel. Until recently, they even had the Beltane, which was uh, jumping over fires and so on uh, on on, uh, on Midsummer's Day, etc., in worship of this god. Or they, the people who were doing it until recently, it, it also in, in Sweden and in, in Scotland and other places. They didn't necessarily, uh, at that stage, they weren't necessarily intending to worship a pagan god. They were following a folk custom, but the, the origins of this folk custom was derived from the worship of this god. And their ancestors had indeed worshipped the Israelites. So we are, as we, we are, were told here, we have been told that the Israelites in the places of exile, they will have enjoyed bread and water, wool and linen, oil and drink, grain, new wine, oil, and a great deal of silver and gold. They will have been uh, uh, rich, rich, wealthy. And they will have used their riches in the worship of false idols and the, the, the worship of uh, Baal. So therefore, Hosea continues and he threatens uh, them, and he threatens them that he will come and he will take away all of their wealth and he will punish them and they will be punished. And uh, after that, he will comfort them and uh, bring them back and return unto them and cause them to repent. And uh, he will extend his mercy to them. And once again, they shall be re-acknowledged as, as the children of God, as Israelites, they will once again know their ancestry. And he says, uh, 23, uh, uh, Hosea 2, verse 23, Then I will sow for myself in the earth, and I will have mercy on her who had not obtained mercy. So to those who are not my people, you are my people, and they shall say, you are my God. Once again, the Israelites will acknowledge the Lord God of Israel, and know who they are, and acknowledge their ancestry. And God will forgive them, and bless them, and may we all be warned, may we all take heed, and uh, look at this, look at this, uh, these verses, because that, they are saying what we said they say, and they are speaking of the lost ten tribes of Israel, and uh, depicting what will happen to them. And this is what is happening to our peoples in our time before our eyes. 
and let us all do the, as well as we can with what we have. Thank you. May the God of Israel bless all of you.